Shalom, Shalom. This is Ozma Wath. Some may know me as Daniel. Um, back out here with another lesson. I uh, had a brother hit me up earlier uh, today. I uh, just want some clarification on Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. So, uh, and also Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Um, be a good opportunity to, to turn into a little quick edifying lesson uh, and, and send it out to the nation. Uh, I'm at work, so it's not going to be long anyway. Uh, hopefully we don't catch a call where I have to leave, but uh, but let's deal with it, right? Uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-three, verse seven, because a lot of people that that um, that have some type of familiarization with the uh, uh, with Israelites, with the Hebrew Israelites, they understand who uh, we know Esau to be in the Bible, and that's a so-called Caucasian race, uh, the so-called white man, right? So uh, a lot of our people that's not in this truth. Um, they will say they'll pull out this verse. Say, see, see, you're not supposed to hate an Edomite. You know, so a lot of our people that that still has that that Stockholm syndrome that still loves their oppressor. Right. So they will run to the law that they believe is done away with anyway and try to <laughs> dismantle so-called dismantle, um, you know, this doctrine. Right. Um, that's as we're about to find out that um, we're just going to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? We're about to find out that that. They're just pulling this out of context, um, you know, and, and to the and to the unlearned person, you know, who, who's not who wasn't groomed in this doctrine or to an unlearned person that just doesn't know the Bible at all. Um, it's not it's not far fetched to, to read this and, and, and to come to that conclusion. Um, <clears throat> but that's why the spirit is, has fallen upon, you know, these brothers to um, to expound upon this. Right. And, and to break down the meaning of it. So uh, so let's deal with it. This is Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. He says, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land, right? So they say, see, see, you're not supposed to hate, uh, you're not supposed to hate the white man, right? You're not supposed to hate the white man. All right, well, let's, let's first and foremost get context um, of this chapter, right? Something that they accuse us of not doing. Uh, they accuse us of not getting context, right? So let's get context. Let's go to verse one. Right. It says he that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. All right. So context. Right. It's a congregation. All right. What is a congregation? It is a sanctuary. It is a tabernacle. This is where sacrifices go down. This is where uh, Yasharala. This is where we congregate. This is where we meet up at. This is an assembly. Right. But, uh, but 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 more importantly, this is where the sacrifices uh, are being held at, right? In the sanctuary, tabernacle. Says he that is wounded in the stones. That means that if you uh, if if a, if a man is wounded in his testicles, right? And it says or have his privy member cut off, meaning that you have your you know your rod cut off, man, right? So he, he was castrated. He says that he shall not enter into the congregation or the assembly or the tabernacle or the sanctuary of Yahweh says a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord an Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever and it's about to tell you why because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt and because they hired against thee Balaam the son of Beor of Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse thee. Nevertheless, Yahweh thy God will not hearken unto Balaam, but Yahweh thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because Yahweh thy God loved thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all thy days forever. It says thou shalt not abhor me in Edomite. So congregation, I mean, so the uh, the context is still regarding about the congregation and and, and who's allowed in it, right? says, Thou shalt not afford an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not afford an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land, right? So what happens in the tank in the sanctuary, in the in the congregation? Once again, this is where sacrifices uh, are held at. So if so if an Egyptian, right, want to make a sacrifice or someone of a different nation, uh that's that's not forbidden by God, if they want to make a, a, a sacrifice unto him, we can't uh we can't hinder that. 
right? This is in the law. It says that we can't hinder that, right? So let's let's deal. Let's break down Deuteronomy chapter twenty-three, verse seven. Let's deal with it, man. Right? It says, <clears throat> "Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite." I'm gonna read it again. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land. Right? All right. So brace brace yourself, you know, for 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 the Bible skeptics. You know that may be watching this people who's already skeptic skeptical of the bible but you don't have to worry about it right because this is why we can go into um into the um original manuscripts right and copies of it to to look at it right so so let's see let's click this word edomite to get more once again i'm running on my hot spot so it's a little slow i'm clicking on it but all right, there it goes. All right, it says Edomite. All right, and it gives you the 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 um, the Yiddish way of saying it, Edomite. All right, it says Edomite. Plain and simple, right? But let's go to the origin of it, right? Let's go to the origin. It says patronomic from H one. Uh, well, let's look at this. Look, let's look at this number, right? For what was used in that verse, it's Strong's H one thirty, right up here. Strong's H-130. Pay attention to that number. Strong's H-130. It says, um, patronomic from H-123, C, H-726, and Edomite. So he's it's telling you to reference to this number right here. Right? Now let's look at it. It says, Amorite, Syrian, Syrian, right? Edomite. So why does it, why does it say Syrian, right? Let's go there real quick. <clears throat> it says, and thou shalt speak and say before Yahweh thy God, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. Now, who was that? That's Jacob, right? Jacob was referenced to as being a Syrian, right? And he went down into Egypt and surjoined there with a few and became there a, a nation, great, mighty, and populous, right? Let's get another precept real quick. Let's get another precept. Let's see, let's get another precept. Let's go to, um, Isaiah chapter 12, verse 12. It says, and Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. All right? That's why he called Jacob an Assyrian, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 5. All right? And this is all stemming back. This is all stemming back to Deuteronomy 23 and 7. That shall not born Edomite. All right? And we went into we went into um that that word or that that number that was actually used there in the original manuscripts. Or the, uh, yeah, the original manuscript in those scrolls, and it had Syrian there, right? As Syrian there. Let me finish this out in Hosea. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet, Yahweh brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet he was preserved, right? So our forefather was called a Syrian. We should not abhor a Syri I mean, we should not abhor Syrians, right? Now let's 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 go back to to uh to this word right what does it say right here root word etymology a clerical error i like this a clerical error for h130 now remember when i said pay attention to that number h130 that's what was that's what's used in your so-called protestant bible well in your protestant bibles that lettering there h130 where it says edomite that shall not pour edomite right and we went into the root word of it it says a clerical error now, let's see what a clerical error is. Clerical error. It says, an error made in copying or writing. So this was an error made by the clergy, right? When they copied this. This is an error made, man. But it's not a problem, right? That's why Yahweh has given us the wisdom, right? To, to go into these things, right? So let's keep dealing with it. I mean, for our people that 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 just use this verse, you know what I'm saying, to to try to justify 
and rectify us, you know, still having to love the white man. It just doesn't make sense biblically, man. It is not cohesive with the rest of the scriptures. All through the scriptures, every, everywhere where you see Esau or Edom or Idumia mentioned, all right, is always in a negative connotation, such as the people of my curse. Speaking of Idumia, let's get that real quick. Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. <clears throat> this is, uh, and this is, and this is in, con in connotation to the, uh, to the second coming, man. When your howl shot comes back and, and splits the sky, right? This is in connotation to it, man. It says, come year, I'm just going to start at verse one. Come year, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein. The world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and their heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth from off the vine. And as a falling fig from the fig tree, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. All right. My sword shall be bathed in heaven. This is a weapon of destruction. All right. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Who's Idumia? This is just a Greek way of saying Edom. All right. Upon the people of my curse to judgment. Now, if God put in his law, right, let's go with the Protestant version. Right. That shall not bore Edomite, man. If God put in his law that you can't hate uh, Edom or Esau or the so-called white race. Right. This, <laughs> what type of sense does that make when they're the people of his cursed judgment? When you look in the, in the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary under Idumia, it literally says uh, the, the nation of people who who is promised unrelentless, merciless judgment from God. Right. <laughs> Bro, like it just doesn't make any sense, man, to read, to to look at the scriptures and still think that we got to love Esau, man. Right. And our people, they're not worried about you hating anybody else. Oh, you hate the Chinese people. OK, so what? You know what I'm saying? They just really concerned about you hating the white man because our people are just still on the plantation mentally, man. Right. We got to get out of that. Right. Let's go to Obadiah real quick. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible. Man, it's slow. All right. I'm going to die chapter 1, verse 2. It says, For thy violence against thy brother, speaking of, of Edom, uh, thy violence against thy brother uh, Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. All right? They're going to be cut off forever, man. Well, let's start at verse, um, yeah, 9 for context. Um, read really this whole chapter, man. If you think that you got to love the so-called white man after reading over Dyer, bro, listen, this just ain't for you. This gospel just ain't for you. And within the gospel, Isaiah 61, it's vengeance upon these other nations, man. All right. That's the south of the point. Over Dyer, chapter 1, verse 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise man out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And thy mighty men of Teman shall be dismayed. Teman is just a, uh, he's a, he's a duke. From of, of, of Esau shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mountain of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. By slaughter, man. God hates these people because of what they've done to his chosen people. The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right, it says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. That's how God feels about them, man. All right? Now let's 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 look at some real quick, right? Look at some real quick. Let's go to Acts thirteen. Let's go to Acts thirteen. Bear with me, my my hot spot is still slow. All right, it says this Acts thirteen and twenty two. Says um, and when he had removed, he raised up unto them. David to be their king. Give an account on the history of, of what happened with David, right? 
Uh, <clears throat> and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Pay attention to that. He shall fulfill all my will. And David was a man after God's own heart, man. It says, after my own heart, and he's going to fulfill all my will. Right? Now, how did David feel about uh, the, the, the Edomites? And what did he do to fulfill God's will? Right? Concerning what he was supposed to do to the Edomites. I'm glad you asked. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Let's go to um, Second Chronicles. Look at an account real quick. Let's look at a, a, a historical account of what David did. It says, And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote of the children of Seir. Who's the children of Seir? Who's the children of Seir? Seir is the land where uh with where Esau uh was dwelling at, man. So when it when it mentions the uh, 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 a geographical location, it may not not necessarily be talking about that land, but it's talking about that people because you are you're just how Israel we're a people before we're that land Israel, right? So it says the children of Seir, it's telling you the children of who where they come from. So the Edomites he smote the the children of uh, Seir, ten thousand of them. It says and other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive and brought them up on the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock and they were all broken in pieces man so 10,000 of these Edomites got pushed off a cliff right they got smoked with yeah, yeah David David uh, pushed thousands of Edomites off a cliff right and it's making an account right here that Amaziah has smoked the children of Seir 10,000 right and um and then cast them down from the top of a rock that they were all broken to pieces. David was in, 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 in Acts 13 and 22. It says, David, man after my own heart, that's going to fulfill all my will. So this was part of the most high will for this to happen to those Edomites. You don't think David knew what was in the law? It was a requirement for every king to write the law and to and to uh, meditate upon. Let's get that real quick. Deuteronomy 17. It was an requirement, man. Deuteronomy 17. We'll start at verse. Um, we'll start at verse 15 for the context. 15 for the context. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. So the context is you setting a king over you, right? And so uh, he's about to tell you what the king is supposed to be doing says, um, we'll start at verse 18, and it shall be when he sit up upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests of the Levites. So the king was, was supposed to write a copy of the law when he sits upon that throne. And it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear Yahweh his God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. Right? So if David was required by the law of the Most High to write these laws down and not just write them down, but to meditate there and read it, you don't think he knew about Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7? Of course, there wasn't versification then, but you don't think he knew about thou shalt not pour Edomite. Man, he, he understood. Well, first and foremost, it, it said Syrian right there. We got how it was a clerical error where, where Esau added that in, man. Because they understand their judgment. That's why it's important to know these prophecies. Because if you know these prophecies, man, you know what's going to happen. Uh-oh. We're getting a run. Hold on, hopefully that's not me. Here it was. All right, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Let me try to hurry up. Let me try to hurry up. 
All right, so, um, so yeah, you don't think David knew about this, man? But yet, David, <laughs> he pushed Edomites off the cliff. He smoked them. He, he even sawed them in half, man. All right? So what type of sense does it make? What type of sense does it make, man? All right, let's go to uh, Psalms 137 real quick. Something that our forefather wrote, David. David wrote this. One of my favorite verses. Let's start at verse 7. He says, remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom. <laughs> he's, he's, he's telling Moses, I remember the children of Edom. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it. What does that mean to raise it, raise it? It means basically uh, when they said, destroy Jerusalem, destroy it, destroy it. Right? Even to the foundation thereof. When that happened? 70 AD. It says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be. That rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. So we're going to be happy when we serve you just how you served us. He says, happy shall he be that taketh and dashes thy little ones against the stones. And this is all in context of the children of Edom, man. David wrote this. And guess what? And guess what uh, God said? His, David is a man after my own heart. And he's going to fulfill all my will, man. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. And you look at it within context of the rest of the Bible. Hey, man, it just doesn't make any sense. So that requires you to do a little more digging. Be a little more diligent on your part. Hold on one second. Bear with me. All right. So, uh, so, yeah, let's look at something else real quick, right? She doesn't know what caused the female to fall. Look at something else real quick. Alright, let's go to uh let's go to Deuteronomy chapter twenty five real quick. I'm sorry about that. Like I said, I'm at work. I'm just trying to do this quick little lesson. Uh Deuteronomy chapter twenty twenty five verse nineteen. We'll start at verse uh, seventeen. It says, Remember what Amalek did unto thee. Now who's Amalek? Amalek is a descendant of Edom. So, in, in, in generalization, they'll make him an Edomite, basically. But this is a particular duke of Edom. A particular tribe out of Edom. All right? He says, remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way, when you were come forth out of Egypt. And this is just two chapters right after Deuteronomy chapter 23. Now we're reading Deuteronomy chapter 25. He says, remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way, when you were come forth out of Egypt. How he met thee by the way and smote the high and most of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Man, because Esau just don't fear God, bro. They don't. You could just look at them. They don't, man. Listen. They're the most irreligious people. They just don't have a spirit, man. They don't have a soul. God created them like that. Vessels fitted for destruction. Verse 19. Therefore it shall be, when Yahweh thy God hath given thee rest from all thy enemies round about. All right. And in the land which Yahweh thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out. He's speaking to the Israelites. These Israelites, we shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. What does that mean? How do you think we're going to blot them out? By killing them, man. Oh, but I thought we can't abhor Edomite. <laughs> Come on, man. Thou shalt not blot. I mean, thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. That's another cut, man. A lot of our people say, man, you just need to forget. You just need to forget what they done, man, and just love them. But it's a commandment in the law. He says, don't forget what they did. Don't forget what they did. This is a commandment. So my brothers that's in this truth that ain't cooning out on me, hey, don't forget it. Don't forget it because yeah, I was going to block them out anyway. Read Obadiah, verse 18. All right. Let's, uh, let's get something else real quick, right? <clears throat> All right, so another another uh, verse that the brother had uh, in mind is Matthew five forty four. Right, let's deal with it. We'll start at verse forty three. Says you have heard that it had been said. All right, so whenever it's, it's saying you have heard, where have we heard it at? In the law, right? Or, or in the prophets, or in the Psalms, right? <clears throat> So we need to make reference to wherever he's talking about. He says, you have heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. 
But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Let me get this real quick. Let's go to Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any rise rebuke thy neighbor. Right now, context of Matthew five, verse forty three is your neighbor, is your neighbor. Right? It says, "Thou shalt not." I mean, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Who is this, who is Leviticus written to? To the Israelites, right? And not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Who's thy people? The Israelites. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Now let's figure out who this neighbor is. I like the NLT because it brings a little more clarification on who your neighbor is. Because everybody is not your neighbor. All right. Do, uh, Leviticus 19.17 in the NLT. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. Do not seek revenge or bury grudge against a fellow Israelite. It's a fellow Israelite. But love thy neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. All right. So yeah, this Matthew five forty four is talking about the your own people. You can't hate your own people. You need to love the enemies of your own people, like your Judases, man. Judas was a prime example of an enemy. All right. But you're still supposed to love him because it's the law. He's an Israelite. All right. So, and you know, we just got plenty of scriptures, man. You know what I'm saying? Proving how how Esau's gonna be blotted out. They're the people of his curse, right? That we're not supposed to forget what they've done. We're supposed to block them out by the edge of the sword, right? So if we still think that we're supposed to love an Edomite, not a poor Edomite, man, the so-called white man. Hey, you're out your mind, right? Especially after this video. So, um. So I want to say call Halal Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah and um, give all praises to the Heavenly Father, man. All right. And uh, for the brothers that's, that's in this truth and with truth and sincerity, uh, continue to endure, stay prayed up, continue to fast, continue to meditate. And until next time, Shalom.